So, hello everybody, and welcome to the first webinar of 3D Vision Labs with the title um, Ultra Wide View Stereo Vision. And my name is Michel Findeisen, I'm COO and co founder of 3D Vision Labs, and I will guide you today through this session. In the next couple of minutes, we will learn how stereo vision 3D measurement works in principle, and we will take a deeper dive into ultra wide stereo vision. And you can expect to learn what, uh, how your algorithms how your applications can benefit from this technology. I guess we can switch to the presentation. So today's session is divided into three parts. In the very first, we will uh, start with a technical focused presentation. It will take us about 50 minutes. And afterwards, I will show you um, a short live demo that uh, in, in this live demo, you can see um, our Hemi stereo NX device running live and in real time. Afterwards, I would like to invite you to a short discussion. So during the presentation, please feel free to, to uh, raise questions in the blog, uh, in, the, in the chat and in the last parts. We will try to answer them as good as we can. And please also feel free to add comments regarding your applications. Since this is our first webinar, this could be a very interesting session, I think. But let us start at the beginning. Over the past few years, 2D machine vision has become a vital part in industry. It is widely used in classical applications for like exam uh, for example, a pattern recognition or optical inspection. Now, 3D machine vision te technology more and more comes aware. And this new technology can change entire industries. Originally, 3D machine vision comes from the consumer market and now heads more and more into industry. I think that seeing intelligent devices are the future, the future especially in industry. Currently, there are four main techniques available for 3D cameras. Here I have mentioned them. Time of flight, laser triangulation, passive stereo vision and structured light. And there is a vast amount of available devices in the market. So you can buy them and you can realize applications. Each of those technologies provides its own set of distinct performance parameters and is therefore optimized for certain applications. In other words, that means there is no single device that can fulfill each and every application. You always have the choice. But all those techniques have something in common. While 2D cameras only provide flat image information, 3D cameras add another dimension. They measure a three-dimensional point cloud of precise coordinates, where the pixel position of every pixel of every image information in space is known. They simultaneously provide X, Y, and Z coordinates of your image data. And this makes your algorithms more robust. You can um, realize new applications. For example, imagine you want to measure um, the shape of an object. You can do this with a 2D camera, but only under certain circumstances. You have to know a few facts about your object you want to measure. With a 3D camera, you do not have anything to know about your object. Even if the distance between your, the object and your camera changes, the measurement result will stay the same. So this is really a powerful instrument in order to generate, uh, generate powerful applications. Here I mentioned a, a new applications, more and more off-highway vehicles like forklifters, for example, or AGVs, autonomous guided vehicles, are equipped with 3D cameras in order to monitor the surrounding. This helps to generate new applications like collision avoidance or, for example, autonomous navigation. This is shown here on the slide on the, on the left part. If we consider this example a little bit closer, then it becomes obvious that there is a, a certain drawback of the available 3D cameras. And this is indeed the limited field of view. So either you accept this and say, okay, I accept blind spots in my application, or you have to employ multiples of these cameras in order to solve your problem. The team of 3D Vision Labs believes that the 3D camera should see more, as indicated here 
on the slide on the right side. And this is where 3 Vision Labs with its new product Hemistereo NX comes into play. Hemistereo NX is a compact, robust 3D camera ready to drive multiples of new industrial applications. It is equipped with two ultra high resolution images, providing ultra high uh, resolution images for strong applications in 2D and 3D imaging. In addition, it, it has an integrated edge AI processing capability. We use NVIDIA Jetson Nano and NVIDIA Jetson Xavier to drive powerful applications that helps our customers to integrate their own applications and to solve their own problems with our sensor. But the most crucial characteristic of our sensor is the world widest field of view of 180 degree. 180 degree, this is really unique. How can this work? We will see on the next slides. In general, Hemistereo NX uses the principle of passive stereo vision. It does not emit any light. It just generates two synchronized images as seen on the slide from two, uh, two, uh, from two different views. And those images are somehow correlated, that means processed together in order to generate 3D information. This concept is quite natural because uh, yeah, the human eyes do this same job every day. Now let us try to measure something on our own. Here we have an example. For visualization, I arranged our sample images next to each other in the orientation of the corresponding sensors which are installed in the device. In order to measure 3D information, stereo vision tries to find for each and every detail of the left image, as seen in the middle of the slide, the corresponding feature in the right image. This is a very high sophisticated process. For example, my colleague here displayed in the left image was a wedding ring. This is our sample feature. Now let us try to find the corresponding feature in the right image. How should we do that? How should the algorithm do it? Should the algorithm search the whole right image for this single feature? It could do this, but it would have to repeat this procedure for millions of pixels again. And this would take a very long time. In our case, we are lucky. Since our sample images are the results of so-called perspective projection and our images are perfectly aligned, it means, as indicated here by white lines, our sample feature shown in the left image can be found on the same horizontal line on the same image row in the right image. That means we can research our search space from 2D to 1D and speed up dramatically the stereo correspondence process. And this helps us to generate real-time devices. These lines, which I have in, um, indicated here with white color, are called so-called epipolar lines. They are quite crucial for generating real-time devices. Having found our con correspondent features, we can yeah, calculate a so-called displacement, which means we calculate an offset, an horizontal offset. For example, in our example, the ring in the left image has been found at column one, the green one. In the right image, we have found the corresponding feature at column two, this is the blue one. The disparity, or in other words, the offset, the pixel offset, the pixel displacement, can easily be calculated by column one minus column two. Quite easy. If we would apply this to the whole image, then we could can generate a so-called map of displacement, a map of disparity, or in other words, a disparity map. This is shown here on the right side as a color-coded version. That means each color indicates another disparity or displacement value. In our example, our ring could be found at disparity, let's say about 150. This is a pixel value. And these disparity values somehow encode the physical distance. So if we put some more mathematic in our cooking pot, then we can somehow translate this disparity map, as shown in the right, in a so-called distance map. 
We have to use some mathematical formula to realize this, but the result is a map of physical distance information for the whole image, or as, see, as displayed for our example, um, for our sample feature, the ring, which can be found in one meter distance from the camera. So we translate the 150 pixel value displacement to a physical value that is one meter in our example. And this is done in real time for each and every pixel. We have to remember that uh, we have high resolution images integrated in our device. That means we get thousands of depth pixels that help us to generate beautiful and complex point clouds. And this is the result that we want to achieve. Addicted to um, a high resolution image and, and a, um, a corresponding depth information. But didn't we want to see more? Here we have a sample image of 90 degree field of view indicated um, on the left side. Yes, we want to see more. We have to see more. And that is why we have integrated two fisheye projecting lenses in the Hemistereo NX device. Both lenses provide full 180 degree images and the, uh, the result can be seen here down below. And look, this helps us to generate more information. We are able suddenly to observe the whole room by one single sensor. We have even discovered another person in the room, which we would have, been, which we would have already mi uh, um, um, almost missed. So now let's try to measure 3D information by that configuration. I once again, I uh, rearranged the images as uh, done for the perspective images. And now let's once again try to find a corresponding feature of a scene detail of the left image. Here I, for example, I chose my nose. You can see it, it is marked with um, a red circle. And now let's try the same process again. We follow the horizontal line to the right image and suddenly discover we have a problem because the corresponding feature is no longer on the same line. This is a crucial problem. Why? Because we cannot longer use fast stereo, uh, uh, stereo correspondence algorithms that generate those informations in real time. This is due to the special projection characteristics of fisheye projecting lenses and of fisheye images. This aspect is indicated by several gray lines here that are somehow bended. That means our we are even and straight stereo, uh, even um, um, and straight apolar lines become somehow bended. And this is a severe problem. So how can we overcome this? The magic is we have to add another processing step here shown on the left side of the slide. We have to do some mathematics. We have to unbend. We have to straighten the epipolar lines again. This is done by a certain image transformation that helps us to straighten the polar lines, the epipolar lines on the one side. And on the other side, it helps us to preserve the full 180 degree field of view. And this is what we, what we need. If we do this for, this for the whole image pair, then we get the result as displayed in the mid of the slide. We get two corresponding images that are of 180 degree field of view and that have straight parallel epipolar lines. This operation is called rectification. We have rectified the images and now we have two corresponding rectified view. And if we consider our sample feature again, then we can suddenly discover it is on the same horizontal line again. And this helps us to perform fast real-time stereo vision on full 180 degree. And here you see the result. We use our algorithm, we perform full image correspondence on 180 degree, 80 degree rectified images and generate 
this beautiful disparity map and furthermore a full distance map. Since we are interested in the fisheye projection and also for our um, distance information we want to have it in a, in a, in a fisheye projection manner because our original images are like that. We have to add another processing step. That means we have to transform our now rectified distance map back, back to the fisheye projection and this is the result. We get a full real-time 3D information that is corresponding to our full hemispherical 180 degree fisheye image. There's nothing more to say about it. It's really crazy and it uh, works in real time. So now um, the underlying mathematics, the underlying algorithms and the real-time implementation is more complicated than I can show here, of course. But we don't have to worry about it because if your Hemisteria and X comes to you, everything is already in the box, everything is ready to use. Finally, before we come to the live demo, here are a small video where Hemisteria NX is in real operation. It uh, works as a sensor for collision avoidance in an industrial environment, protects the vehicle uh, yeah, with an opening angle of full 180 degree in front of the vehicle and automatically stops if there is an obstacle. And this could be your application. So I think um, now it's time to um, switch over to the live demo. Um, therefore, I already prepared one of our Hemistereo NX sensors here. So maybe you have seen the sensor already on our website and have um, informed yourself about it. Um, I already connected a 19 volt power supply as well as a data link um, to my laptop. So you, um, you are free in choice um, whether you, you want to choose Ethernet or you want to choose um, a USB. I ch um, chose USB because it's so convenient and it is so easy to use. So let me just put the sensor here and then um, just uh, switch over to the viewer software that uh, you can see uh, what's going on. Maybe you can see it already on your screen. Yes. So this is now the viewer software. This is um, yeah, the basic software element um, that you uh, get or then the, uh, which you can download from the website. And um, when your Hemisteria NX comes to you, you can immediately gather um, data um, via this software from the sensor and get an impression how the sensor works. In the very first, um, we can mention um, that the sensor, as you can see here in the, in the center image, really displays and observes the whole room. One room with one sensor. So you even can see my operator team that helps me uh, for producing this video. Thanks Lars for, for creating. And yeah, uh, corresponding to this, we have a high resolution, omnidirectional and real-time depth map. This is, as you have seen it already in the PowerPoint, um, shown in color-coded manner. Um, you can make multiple adjustments here. Um, I think this video is too short to explain everything. We will make special sessions for, for all the parametrizations that you, that you can do. The thing is, if you combine both informations together, then we have another display for this. This is our beautiful point cloud that um, shows the whole room in 3D you see uh, we can freely move in this scenery and uh, we have real 3D information. I can, I can tilt and pan the camera, uh, we can rotate. We can even see, see a model of the sensor at the original place where the sensor is located. On the left side of this beautiful um, VO software, we have multiple uh, possibilities uh, for parametrization. You can even change the, the method, how stereo images are correlated. You can even use deep neural network based algorithms. You can parameterize them and you can even change the opening angle of the sensor. So could, I could also switch to um, a perspective projecting um, um, image um, um, method here. 
I can freely configure resolution, opening angle, in horizontal, in, in vertical manner. And each and every of these parameters can be accessed also by an API. So you can drive, you can steer the sensor uh, from your own software so that you can freely integrate this sensor in your solution. I guess for the parametrization, there are many more things I could um, um, tell you about. Um, we will make extra sessions, I guess for a first impression. This should be enough and this should give you an idea how your application can benefit from Hemistereo NX from ultra-wide stereo vision. So thank you very much so far. Um, I guess um, now um, it's the point uh, where the stage is yours. Um, I would be glad to answer questions from your side regarding our device, regarding maybe your application or maybe something completely else. So please feel free. Um, my colleagues will help me to, uh, to collect the questions and um, as soon as um, I see uh, any question of my, uh, on my display, then uh, we, can, we can start um, to answer them. Okay, first question. Um, oh, that, that's an interesting one. The question is, yeah, somebody asks, um, okay, I mentioned that we have a Jetson on the, cam uh, on the camera. Yes, uh, we use uh, two different versions. So we integrated the, um, the, the Jetson Nano for, um, yeah, a low -priced agro for low pri pricing applications and we integrated the Xavier for high performance applications. And the question is, can I put my own software in a sensor? That is a good question. Hemistereo NX, in principle, is an open platform. That means we provide basic software building blocks, but the, the, the Linux uh, in the system and the software structure itself is completely open. That means you are able to directly put your applications in the sensor. It works as a complete edge device. Your applications works in the sensor and you are also able to add freely own software blocks and um, modify the sensor in a wide range of possibilities. Yes, definitely, you can put your own software in the device. The next question is, do the transformation, will the stereo matching be bad at the four corners of the image? Due to, ah, sorry, due to transformation, will the stereo matching be bad at the four corners of the image? Definitely no. So the transformation, or let me let me answer in an, in, a, in, a, in another in another way. Um, the transformation itself can be carried out for a field of view of 180 by 180 degree. Yes, but due to, to the binocular arrangement of the image lens of the lenses, as you can see it here on our device, we are somehow limited um, in the field of view in one direction. That means we can generate high quality depth information in one direction for, for, uh, for full 180 degree. And autoconnel to this direction, we achieve approximately 140 degree. This is not due to the bad quality of image correlation, but this is to the um, limitation of the triangulation process in principle. So no, I can answer this question with no. Um, we have not a bad quality at the corners of the image. Everything is at the same quality. Oh, that is an interesting question. Do I get root access to the Jetson? Um, at the moment, um, each and every user gets root access to the Jetson um, to have full access and the full control on the device. I guess um, in future, maybe we will have different, um, um, yeah, different solutions for this because uh, some um, users also get in trouble because if you are too free to do everything, then um, it may be possible 
that um, that uh, your system crashes and um, this happens um, if you um, are too free on the Jetson. Currently you have root access. Later on maybe we will provide um, an, an ecosystem of possibilities that you are able um, somehow to, to put your application in the sensor but without root. I guess this is not yet decided but at the moment you have full access on the Jetson, yes. Okay, then let's wait another couple of minutes if there are any further interesting questions. Okay, um, yeah, maybe the presentation was so clear that everything is clear. Okay, the operation team asks me to wait another couple of minutes, so no problem. Oh, we have another question. Do you plan to implement this device in the future using FPGA? For example, Xilinx, That is interesting. Um, yeah, we have, this is in discussion. Uh, we have discussed several times about this issue because um, one of the greatest benefits of Hemistereo and X using GPU processing capability is the great flexibility. That means you can alter, you can change the parametrization in real time in a wide range of possibilities, even during runtime you can directly integrate your algorithms freely in the system and even use the GPU capability for processing uh, neural networks. So it could be that we think about maybe to, to implement this in future on an FPGA, but then it, um, it should be a platform uh, with um, addicted uh, GPU processing capability for neural networks and um, we would have to make sure to somehow keep the flexibility of the Hemi system, uh, of the Hemi stereo system as it is currently. So this is also still in discussion. It is an interesting point because we, we also know about um, the, the benefits of FPGA. It is very low power and um, um, highly integrated processing platform. Um, but of course, um, it, is an, uh, is it, it would be a high sophisticated project. But depending on um, on how these kind of processing platforms will develop in future. So maybe um, you should keep in touch and um, we will inform you as soon as we have made a decision in that direction. We have another question. The device you're showing looks different color from your website. Is that really Hemistereo and X? <laughs> Yeah, thanks for this question. Um, yes, this, this is original Hemi Stereo NX. Um, of course, on our website, um, the, the, um, the device shown there is in, um, is in three division labs, um, blue color. And um, this is also an indication for its uh, primary um, application fields, um, that is industry. But uh, we also get several requests for customers that want to use uh, this um, kind of processor, for example, for health applications, for safety um, and uh, security applications, for fault detection applications, um, for people monitoring, people counting. Um, the, the, the number of, um, of applications is endless. So we decided to provide also other uh, colors on request. This is, for example, as you see it here, it's a, a kind of white color. And this is a primary um, uh, for indoor um, people monitoring use because, you know, a white, uh, the white color from, from your smart home devices, um, it's just an established color. So in principle, um, on our website, you can buy Hemi Stereo NX um, with uh, three division labs, blue color uh, for whatever you want to do with it. And if you um, have an application where a higher quantity can be achieved, then just um, yeah, get in contact with us and you get each and every color you would like to have.
Okay. Um, then, if there are no more questions, oh, we have a further question. Can you tell us how much costs the sensor? So one of the, the, the key features of Hemi Stereo NX is that it is quite affordable. So currently we provide um, two processing platforms, as I mentioned already, and um, those two uh, platforms are the NVIDIA um, Jetson Nano. And if you uh, would like to buy such a device, you can buy it on the website for um, 499 euros. Um, per unit, and if you decide for the high power, for the for the for the higher powerful uh, variant, um, Hemi Stereo NX with um, with the Xavier platform, then it costs 899 euros. You can uh, freely get uh, access to our web shop and uh, just order it. It will be um, yeah at your side in a couple of weeks. Okay, I guess, um, yeah, we finished almost in time. So once again, um, thank you very much. I uh, hope you enjoyed this webinar. Um, as mentioned earlier, um, this, will be, uh, this was the first webinar of, uh, of a series of episodes. Um, so look forward um, what's coming up next and stay informed and stay healthy. I wish you a nice day. Bye-bye.